Well, hello there. Welcome along to another King's Daily. It's great to have you with us today. Um, I'm really excited as we've reached um, what some people call the high point in 2 Corinthians as we've been working our way through it. Um, so we're going to jump straight in uh, to 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, verse 7. Uh, let me just pray for us before we before we start. Father, I thank you that uh, I thank you that when we come to your word, we, we come to it with a sense of excitement. Lord, what are you going to uh, speak to us today about? How are you going to reveal more of your nature? How are you going to uh, remind us of the cross? How are you going to uh, direct our paths into, into what the day holds for us? So, Lord, I just pray today as we, uh, as we read your word, uh, we, we get excited again at all that you are, at all that you've done, and at all that you have for us. I ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Brilliant. Let's get going, shall we? Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. So to keep me from becoming conceited because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from becoming conceited. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly of my weakness, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. I don't know if you're the sort of person who uh, uses highlighters or colour coding as you, as you read and mark your way through your Bible. Um, if you are, I reckon what we've just read is something that you may well have circled or, or turned yellow already. Um, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. That's kind of where we're going to be circling around for the next few minutes. Um, but before that, what, what caused Paul to... Um, to have that conversation with God in the first place. Well, Paul was sent a, a thorn to harass him, to keep him from becoming conceited. We've just been reading about how he has had these uh, great spiritual experiences, these, these revelations, these encounters with God. And yet God wanted to keep him grounded in the day to day. So he gave him a thorn. Something that would continually push him back to Jesus in prayer rather than relying on his previous experiences and the, uh, uh, and the highs that they'd given. We're not told what the thorn is. Um, that's kind of helpful, I guess, because it, it, means that, it means that we don't have to be specific. But there are things in life that, that come along that push us towards Jesus in prayer rather than relying on our own um, our own sense of grandeur and experience uh, and anything like that. So that's really what the thorn is, something that keeps pushing Paul back to Jesus. Um, you can see that because it says three times I pleaded with the Lord. But God didn't answer Paul's prayer in the way that Paul wanted him to. I wonder if that's ever happened to you. I wonder if you've ever gone to God with a uh, request, say, God, would you give me that job. God, would you uh, provide for us in this way? God, would you do this for me? And yet God comes back with an initial no. Why? Because God's got something better. God had something better for Paul. And that was grace that was sufficient and power that's made perfect in weakness. Makes me think of the cross, doesn't it? I don't know if it does for you. Makes me think of the cross where Jesus died in my place. Where his, his love took him to a place where the, the, the wrath of God that was due to me for my sin, my, my falling short, my missing the mark. And he took that for me. It's not a case of... Um, Jesus topped up my holiness. Jesus exchanged my sinfulness for his righteousness. I was justified. His grace is sufficient for me. 
And Jesus' power is made perfect in weakness. Again, thinking of the cross, the weakness of the cross. Jesus died. And then three days later, in power, he rose again. Therefore, Paul says, I will boast all the more gladly of my weakness so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. The language Paul is is using there is is reminiscent of the of the Old Testament uh, right at the end of Exodus. Uh, when they build the tabernacle, it says that the cloud, the presence of God covered the tent of meeting and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle that covered. It's the same sort of word as rest, that the presence of God would rest on his people, that they would know um, that he is with them, that they would know he is for them that they would know he is working through their uh, their wanderings and circumstances and life for, for his glory and their good. Which is why Paul would be able to say, I can be content with weakness. I can be content with insults. I can be content with hardship and persecution and calamities because there are opportunities for me to turn to God in prayer and, and receive his all-sufficient grace. It's Hebrews, isn't it, that says, that we come to the throne of grace to receive mercy and help in time of need. I'd love to pray for you guys. Um, if you're in a, um, in a in a situation where you're thinking, God, I need I need your help. God, I need your mercy today. God, I need your uh, your grace for what I'm facing. Uh, I'm going to pray for you. And equally, if you're in a in a place where you're thinking, you know, I don't think I need God's grace today. Uh, I'm going to pray for you. Uh, the the author Jerry Bridges. Um, wrote something that said very simply, <clears throat> excuse me, that there is uh, on our best day, we are not beyond, we are, we are not in need of God's grace. And on our worst day, we are not beyond the reach of God's grace. So I just want to pray for us in all that we've got going on today. Lord Jesus, I thank you that in all things, your grace is sufficient for us. Uh, so, Lord, I want, I want to pray for us who are um, uh, in what we're facing today, Lord. I want to pray that we would know your presence. We would know the peace that it brings. Uh, we would know uh, the power to walk well uh, through all that all that's in front of us. Uh, and, Lord, I, I ask that we also we would be able to boast in our, in our weakness, Lord. It would be it would be things that push us back to you continually. That we'd know each day. Lord, we wake up connected to you, connecting to you, experiencing your, your grace, your favour, hearing you speak to us through your word, stirring our hearts in, in wonder and worship. Lord, I thank you for your presence with us. Lord, I, I ask that uh, as even now, Lord, even now, Lord, you, you fill us with your spirit that we would receive the mercy and grace that you have for us today. And that we would walk well in today because of it. Thank you, God. I hope that's helpful, church family. God really loves you. We'll see you soon.